intertestimonial period, right before the transition into the new covenant. Amen. And we talked about it. We established a few things. Maybe I'll just uh, kind of briefly just give you it in a nutshell. Uh, it's really, I believe when we started off the conversation, I shared with you, <clears throat> it's talking about a particular priesthood that ran a fray or became a bastardized nation. And uh, in order for God to interact with natural Israel, he put a system in place. I mean, you know, Moses was a man. He had a blueprint to build what was in the heavens to come into the earth. And he had some instructions. And one of the, uh, the weaknesses of that system is that the people couldn't change what was taking place on the inside of them. So he gave them an external mechanism or method in order how to connect with God or how to accommodate God. And so the ceremonial laws. And by the time we get to Malachi, after almost, I think it's 500 years of, uh, 1,500 years, pretty close to that, uh, about 1,200 years of uh, uh, a degenerated system. And we have a precious promise in this particular chapter, of the book in chapter 3, it talks about how there is one coming. Mm -hmm. And it will be a messenger of that coming. Mm -hmm. And God was going to disengage himself from that old system. And he's going to inaugurate, initiate a new system, which is what the New Testament is all about. It's a new system. Amen. It's a testament that's been confirmed and ratified by Jesus Christ. But in between that transition, he had a, 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 what they call an intermediary, which was John the Baptist, the prophetic voice that will be the bridge mm -hmm. between the old and the new. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he passed the baton to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, But it, we also found out, if you go to the first three verses in Malachi, the first one, two, and three, it talks about that the person that was represented in this covenant will take up residence in his temple. Yes. And we already know, we've done too many teaching that this temple is a people. Yes. Right? Yes. Good. So this temple is a people. How many know that's us? Mm -hmm. And he's going to sit as a refined like a fire. Refined as fire. Uh, he has his hand on the temperature. Yeah. Tell you that he has his hand on the temperature. Yes. Yeah, he, he can determine what he wants to do with it. Yes. And he's, he's sitting in the people. And he's got the process. And this fire is going to produce a people. Mm -hmm. Ultimately. And, amen? Yeah. amen? And then we went and we clicked up another gear and I had somewhere along the line you guys looked spooked so I had to go ahead and show you that this fire was in the earth anyway. Yes. You know, so I actually Second Peter three was not in my notes. But I heard it in the spirit while I was ministering. And it's very imperative and it's very important for us to understand the ministry of that particular uh text. Let's go to Second Peter three. We'll start over there. We'll I'll kind of talk about it a little bit. I got to speed up. So, Second Peter three. Let me hurry up. I'm like a '57 Chevy. I like to take my time. Sometimes I get out like a like a Tesla or something. Most of the time, I'm build, building up steam because I like to teach first, and then the preaching come in the next gear. But I, I got to hurry up. Second Peter three verse eight says, "But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that the one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day." The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but as long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So from what we understand in those three verses, that the earth is preset for a cleansing. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And if we're in the earth, mm -hmm. we're, okay, help me out, y'all. Mm -hmm. I know you, all the unsaved folks don't want to say it, but uh, the unbelieving believers. We are in the earth. We are on a terra firma. We are in a large scheme of things, and we are preset yes. for a cleansing. Yes. yes. Now, most folks in other churches believe that the earth is going to be destroyed with fire. Yeah. But what Peter said is that it's going to be cleaned or yeah. purged yes. with fire. Mm -hmm. 
You hear what I'm saying? So life will exist. Humans will exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trees will exist. Yes. The structure that was in the place from the beginning will exist. Mm -hmm. yes. But the system yes. that it finds itself in yes. because of what transpired in the garden it's going to be removed. Yes. Tell, your name, tell your neighbor, systems are going to be removed. That's what Jesus came. He brought a system. He didn't bring a religion. He brought a system. Amen. That's what the kingdom is about. It's a system. Most of us still struggling and trying to see what the kingdom is about. It's a system. Mm -hmm. That's why you got it. And the only way you can transition into that system is you got to be renewed. Where? In your mind. That's another message. That's why we still live in, we're still living under the worldly system. We're still living in the Egyptian system mm -hmm. or the Babylonian system mm -hmm. and not the kingdom system. Amen. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, let's deal with this here. Uh, so he said that uh, uh, in here it says that uh, the, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. The elements shall melt. The elements, that's the key. The who? The elements should do what? Melt. Or it's going to be the next verse says, seeing that the all these things shall be dissolved. What man that person ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? What basically what Peter said in Moffat's paraphrase, because I believe Steve Moffat has his own paraphrase and he has his own system of, of thought. He basically saying, don't cleave to that which is evil. Yeah. Hold fast to that which is good. Yeah. So whatever you building in and whatever substructure you've created. It's going to go into deep introspection. Mm -hmm. yes, that is going to be a cleansing yes. property. Yes. Everything that's connected to our sphere. Mm -hmm. yes. That's everything. That's marriage, that's finances, yes. that's relationships, yes. that's ecclesiastical stuff, so affiliations to churches, all that stuff that's in the earth. Yes. If it's not built correctly, it's going to do what? Dissolve. Oh, How? Yes. With a great noise. Mm -hmm. With what? A fervent heat. Yes, yes. Y'all understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm getting more amens. This third trip, thank God. <laughs> I feel y'all on more. Right. Amen. So let's look at elements. Because I told you on Wednesday that I didn't give you the definition, but I want to give you the definition. I'm giving you the definition out of what Strong says, because that's next to the Bible. Then I'm going to give you my definition, which is the third in line. Right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so 2 Peter, I mean, yeah, 2 Peter 3 and 10, it talks about the elements. So we're going to look at the elements. It's going to come up for us. I've got faith. <laughs> i got faith. There we go. Move the scripture out of the way. There you go. There you go. So elements. This is what it means in your Greek. If you get a blue letter Bible, you use any of the applications that's online, you, they have a whole cacophony of, of resources on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. You can Google. You can be Google happy. Amen. You just got to get off your blessed assurance. That's all. Elements. So it's G forty-seven forty-seven. The word is stoikon. We go. This is the only Greek term we're gonna get this morning. Okay. <laughs> stoikon is used seven times in scriptures. Four times is used as element, like in this case in the, uh, the tenth verse. Principle. Mm -hmm. Amen. Rudiments. Remember the one over mm -hmm. Colossians two and eight. And 2 and 20. So though it says, and the definition is the rudiment or first step. It's an orderly arrangement. Yes. How many know there's the orderly arrangement in the earth? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's another term that's closely connected to it because it talks about the cosmos. If you look cosmos up, we get the word cosmetic or surface stuff. You ever heard the word cosmetic? Mm -hmm. Cosmos. Yes. Same thing. It's surface stuff. And it also is the orderly arrangement. And the world that we see and the world that we're so connected to. And most of us are still, you know, frenemies. Yeah. With, with you know, the one that uh, uh, Paul talked about, John said, if you're a friend of the world, you are, and James said it too, you're an enemy to God. Mm -hmm. And some of our hostility that we feel within our spirit it's because the Holy Spirit is lusting to have control over us. Yeah, amen. To bring us into our true identity. That we don't have to live from the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. We don't have to live to the first order of the first arrangement, which is rudimentary 
and elementary principles or principles upon which something operates. Mm -hmm. So there's a system out there. That how, how many know you can't even purchase anything without credit? Yes, sir. There's a system. You can purchase it if you get money. Mm -hmm. But if you want to operate, there's a system that are in operation, that are in place, and you got to play by the rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I get on top of this building and jump off, there's a system. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey I mean, I ain't going to fly. Yeah. High possibility is you're going to hear something say, slap. <laughs> if there's not anything to break my fall, first of all, I'm not going to do it. Right. <laughs> but I'm just saying, hypothetically, those, those are systems. Yeah. It's a law of reciprocity. Mm -hmm. That's a system. So there are some systems in place. Mm -hmm. And these systems reside not only as, as, as rules of engagement, but these systems are embedded in our thinking. Yes. Right. And I told you Wednesdays, as long as they exist, we can't access the second. There's an invitation to come up higher. Yeah. Where? In our thinking, yeah. not in location, dimensionally. He, he's challenging the way we think and perceive him, and he's asking us and he's provoking us to think anew, think again. Yes. 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 I get excited about this stuff. I don't know how y'all sit all oh, calcified and reserved when I interpret everything. You have to figure this stuff out. I'm sharing with you. Amen. I'm breaking off the pieces and putting it in your lap. These are not crumbs. These are low uh, uh, a strips no, off the man. original loaf. Amen. Yeah. It's that first step. It's the first step of order and arrangement, a base, a rudimentary thing. But then there, there's another word called it's the root word. Stoico. Mm -hmm. So the root word to the order and arrangement is to walk, proceed, to step in order, to march in military fashion, to keep step, yeah. to confirm, to virtue and piety. It's a metaphor to go on per, per, uh, prosperously to turn out well. Amen. Mm -hmm. So in other words, after he displaced the former system, yeah. the roots system, the, the new foundation, is that all of a sudden we enter into a military zone. When I read this and I searched this out a couple, few years back, I thought about it. I'm like, wow, we can really get this thing. We, we've been drafted. We have marching orders. We've been harnessed for a purpose. You see what I'm saying? To be conformed to his virtue and his piety to think a total different way. That's why I told you it's not by coincidence that even the word for kingdom, the root word, is basilia is the main word, but the 